Hey there. Let's talk about solving the quadratic by the quadratic formula. So the first thing we're going to deal with is this video is going to focus on solving quadratics by the quadratic formula. So first thing, probably good to know what the quadratic formula is. Now there's lots of songs out there. You probably heard the song in class, maybe sang it, but as a refresher, here it is. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. At first glance, looks uh, pretty intimidating, but we're going to break it down because this is intended for an Algebra 1 class. Really break it down and take care of this piece by piece and not try and do it all at once. So the most important thing is, well, what are these letters a, b, and c? Where they come from is you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero for a quadratic. So a is always the number in front of x squared. b is always the number in front of x. And c is our constant at the back. The other thing that you need to notice there is, yes, this needs to be equal to zero. Always start with it equal to zero. So I, fortunately, we start with an example like that. So I, it's clear what c is, b is. a, the number in front of the x squared there is just going to be a one. So what I would like to do is really pull out my information and get very organized. So A, B, and C. So A is 1, B is 6, C is negative 27. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out kind of on the side the different pieces of the quadratic formula. Then I'm going to put it together in the formula and then arrive at our answer. So the first thing I worry about is let's find negative B. So we're going to take B and take a negative of it. So I need to start with a negative, so there it is. And then I need b, which is 6. So negative b is going to be negative 6. Another way you can think about negative b is you take whatever your b is, change the sign, and flip it, and you get your negative b. So if it's positive 6, it's going to be negative 6. If we started with negative 6, we're going to end up with positive 6. The next piece I try and find out off to the side is b squared minus 4ac, and that's probably the most difficult part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re replace the b, the a, and the c in this b squared minus 4ac, but what I do, I want to put parentheses around it. So starting with b squared, I'm going to have a 6, which is b, and square it, minus, that's a subtraction, 4. Next I should have a, which is 1 then c, which is negative 27. So b squared minus 4ac. Now, I'm going to let uh, the calculator handle a lot of this. You can do the math there. It's not overly difficult. But I'm going to type it in my calculator just like I see it. So parentheses, parentheses, 6, parentheses squared. That's a subtraction 4, parentheses 1, parentheses, parentheses. And now we're going to use a negative sign. So not a subtraction, negative sign 27. So the key thing is, no, this is a subtraction here. These are negative signs on the numbers. Hit enter, and we get 144. Finally, the final piece that I'm going to find out off to the side is 2a. So that's 2 times 1, which is 2. So I have all my pieces here. I know what negative b is. I know what b squared minus 4ac is. I know what 2a is. So I'm going to use and reference my formula and put together what my answer is. So I need negative b first, which we said was negative 6. Next I need a plus or minus. And then inside the square root, I need b squared minus 4ac, which we said is 144. And then in the denominator, I need 2a, which we said is 2. Now, this is a lot cleaner than what that looked like originally. Our next goal is to break this down in the most simplified form. So the first thing I focus on is the square root. So the square root of 144, uh, before I try anything, I'm going to see, can we do the square root of 144? So square root of 144, that's 12. So I can change this over now to, I'm going to rewrite most of it. But let's put, instead of putting the square root of 144, we could put 12. The second thing I'm going to do is I like to split this up. And now this second, steps here on out, you can go different routes, but I'm going to split it up, meaning I have negative 6 plus or minus 12 divided by 2. Both these numbers are divided by 2. Negative 6 is divided by 2, and 12 is divided by 2. So I'm going to split it up. So this is going to look like negative 6 divided by 2. 
plus or minus 12 divided by 2. So negative 6 divided by 2, 12 divided by 2. And the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the addition or subtraction here. Now you could simplify these fractions out before you add and subtract. Sometimes they will simplify, sometimes they won't. Um, on this one, I'm going to let the calculator handle a lot of it, and I'm going to do negative 6 divided by 2 plus 12 divided by 2. So negative 6 divided by 2 plus 12 divided by 2, and I get x equals 3. That is one answer. And now I'm going to do it again, but this time with subtraction. So negative 6 divided by 2 minus 12 divided by 2. So I switch it instead of addition to subtraction, hit enter, and I get x equals negative 9. Now one quick moment before I end here, because that is the completion of our problem, is let's say you type this all in and you get an answer like 4.75. And, you know, maybe your teacher or I want you to write this as a fraction. The way you can do that is on your calculator, your calculator, graph calculator will change things over to fractions. You're going to hit math, first option, frac. And what that's going to do is that's going to change that 4.75 into the most reduced fraction. So in this case, 19 over 4. So if you do run into decimals and you're like, you know, I really want a fraction instead or I need a fraction for whatever reason, you can do that. And that was solving using the quadratic formula.